This is Jurassic World The Ride. Featuring seamless screen technology, some of the largest lifelike animatronics to date, and a nearly 9-story drop, this ride meets the franchise legacy of pulse-pounding thrills. Being the first theme to the franchise, and the most expensive, it's the most immersive ride at Universal Studios Hollywood. Today, we'll take an equally extensive look at the engineering and technology behind it. So come with us behind the scenes to show you how it works. While Jurassic World The Ride opened in 2019, our adventure begins 23 years back in 1996. During the meteoric rise of the Jurassic Park movie franchise, director Steven Spielberg pushed Universal execs on the idea of an in-world themed attraction ending with a high-stakes encounter with nature's most infamous killer, the T-Rex. Enlisting the help of Landmark Entertainment Group for story design, Wilcoma rides for the flume system that was first tested in the Netherlands and Sarkos Industries for the high-tech robotic dinos, he finally got his wish with this $110 million ride, the most expensive ride ever built at the time. In 1996, the ride opened to massive success with two-hour-plus lines and was praised for its cutting-edge animatronics like the 35-foot-tall, 5-ton hydraulic T-Rex that jumps out at riders down the massive 84-foot drop. In 2018, the original ride would close after minor modifications to the splashdown section and was extensively revamped to bring in the featured dinosaurs from the Jurassic World films. During the renovation, the long under-maintained Ultrasaurus animatronics were removed completely and replaced with a shade-covered Mosasaurus scene. While no other major figures were removed, a lot was going on inside the ride's finale building. During this time, figures were refurbished and moved into the building, teams of artists created a jungle-like environment indoors, and the sections of the building were reinforced for incoming new equipment. Universal intended this renovation to only take nine months, but part delays for the ride's grand finale caused the ride to open unfinished on July 12, 2019. Around this time, Universal also ramped up work on another new Jurassic World ride, a brand new multi-launch coaster across the country at Islands of Adventure, Velocicoaster. A coaster with new age technology and a world-class layout you'll love to bring home with our Light Rides LED displays available at amusementlabs.etsy.com. Each board helps support the channel and bring you more videos like this. As guests arrive at the loading dock, they'll load 25 at a time into one of two boats. Each boat does float on its own but contains underwater wheels in order to stay within the defined track underneath. At other points, it's moved by drive tires that rely on photo eye sensors to keep each boat timed just right and from colliding. If something isn't right, the ride system can pause or completely shut down. After a short ascent up a hill, the boat quickly turns into the first and most controversial scene the Mosasaurus tank that replaced the Ultrasaurus scene. As soon as the ride reopened, many fans speculated on how the effect was pulled off. Was it a physical set, a digital Mosasaurus, layered screens, 3D screens? The answer is actually quite simple. They are high resolution LED screens, but the effect relies on three layer tricks to make the effect convincing from every seat over the large boat. Those tricks are concealment, continuous motion, and a moving parallax. On concealment, as we enter the scene, I want you to notice a few things. There are eight screens in this scene, but we can only see two and then later four. This is intentional. If we could see all the way down to the last screen, the effect wouldn't work. These screens are intentionally set back into the walls and the pillars between each window are intentionally thick in order to block what's happening on the other four screens. Next up is continuous motion, and this is a two-part role between the boat and the screen content. The boat needs to maintain a continuous and calculated speed in order to stay on the track with the animation's timing, while the screen content needs to always be in motion. This motion surrounding the riders triggers the brain's depth perception as they move through and is why nothing on the screen is stationary like the pillars in the tank, the moving background, and the Mosasaurus itself. This constant motion tricks the brain into ignoring the flatness of the screen entirely. Finally, the last piece of the effect is the motion parallax. Done by Industrial Light and Magic, this motion parallax required digitally recreating what riders would see if their Mosasaurus were real and creating a video for the screens that matched the moving viewing angle to create the 3D perspective. While riders height and seat vary, the implied size of the tank, the constant motion and the set extensions of the pillars make the small distortions and the presence of the screens basically disappear. If you look behind you as the boat goes under the waterfall, you'll also spot the screens resetting for the next incoming boat. 
These tricks all come together along with several water effects to create the scene, but there are actually abandoned parts of it that never made it through. During early development and advertisement filming, the boats were meant to be bumped from below as the Mosasaurus attacked tank windows. Allegedly, this effect was tested, but early runs saw that it caused issues with the boats staying on track and was a potential hazard for riders, so it was never implemented fully. From here, the ride is mostly unchanged, with many of the animatronics receiving the TLC they needed for many years. The new Predator Cove originally opened as a rather gruesome scene of deceased pterodons, uh, and this section replaced the beloved but often non-functional jeep falling effect from the past with the first Indominus figure. For Jurassic World The Ride, Universal partnered with Oceanarian Entertainment Systems, an industrial engineering services firm, to make two different Indominus Rex animatronics. The first one we see in the ride is the head and neck Indominus, which pushes through a broken cage to menace riders. Featuring about six axes of motion, this figure is actually what sat in the finale scene when it opened in 2019 in place of the unfinished Indominus Rex animatronic. This finale stand-in received rather mixed reactions from guests as it was not the full body figure that was originally promised and was rather limited. After renovations in 2020, it was installed here before the lift while a new figure was finished. Going up the lift, riders get the same but rethemed experience as before with the sliding dino that comes down from the ceiling. After a suspenseful crest of the lift, the boat splashes down into the jungle-themed environment of the T-Rex habitat. Immediately, riders are met with another animatronic that was refurbished during the trains, the Dilophosaurus. With some of its axes of motion restored, it continues to do what it's done best, spitting venom at riders. Being indoors or heavily covered from the elements was the key to the renovation, keeping the new expensive figures protected. The second Indominus figure we encounter is a ceiling Indominus head. The mechanics for this figure were originally consulted on by Bob Gurr, yes, that Bob Gurr, with the figure descending from the ceiling in a first attack at riders, stopped only by its size. For the re-theme, it was redone by Edge Innovations to reskin the former T-Rex ceiling head animatronic into an Indominus Rex animatronic. As part of the storyline and as the franchise's most popular creature, Blue appears having been sent to us to show us the way out of danger. Appearing as a walking figure, this was actually an in-house figure from Universal and sits on a turntable mounted on a linear slide track. And finally, we get to the moment you've all been waiting for. Weighing in at over 52,000 pounds, 22 feet high, and costing an estimated $25 million, this final hydraulic Indominus Rex animatronic was craned into the building during the 2020 shutdowns piece by piece. This animatronic finally got its big debut in the park's phased reopening in 2021, around the time the Velocicoaster opened as well. Which, by the way, if you'd like to get one of these full color circuit boards, you can get one at amusementlabs.etsy.com. Each one helps create videos just like these, and a portion of proceeds is donated to Give Kids the World. Resting on a concrete slab, this animatronic starts out with a linear track and a platform pushed and pulled by a large haul cable running by a hydraulic motor. The main platform has the ability to rotate around to face the Indominus towards riders and also towards the existing T-Rex. The actual Indominus body is set up like a head on a seesaw with the legs being the middle pivot and the arms, neck, and a head assembly on the front. To counteract the weight of this equipment, the hydraulic reservoirs for the figure are used as counterweights inside the tail end of the figure. The neck of the Indominus figure has four axes of motion set up in a vertebrae-like layout to create the pitch and yaw of the neck. The head, as big as it is, only has a few axes of motion with a nod, turn, and twist of the head, plus the jaw opening and closing. The figure also does have movable eyes and eyelids. The head can rotate to the twist axes as mentioned, but it has lately been limited due to tearing of the external skin. More axes of motion lie in the arms of the figure, with seven each for a grand total of about 28 axes of motion for the whole Indominus Rex animatronic. The entire figure also includes active damping, similar to shock absorption, that keeps the figure from exerting abnormal forces on parts and keeps it under smooth control. With over 36,000 pounds of moving mass, it's not something you would want moving outside of pre-programmed motions. Speaking of programming, the Irex figure also features a number of different show programs that change depending on the position of the boats to each other, ride operation status, delay factors, as well as even system changes local to the figure itself. This massive hydraulic figure, while more efficient than the original T-Rex figure, still on the ride, 
still requires immense hydraulic pressure to get it moving and receives daily inspections just like every other part of the ride. With ride re-themes, you might notice that more budget can often more easily go to animated figures and special effects based on the existing ride infrastructure. Speaking of the ride, the boat of riders is slowly taking up the crest of the drop using a chain to assure alignment with the track. At this point, the Indominus quickly rotates over towards us, quite quickly for something of its size, and lunges down towards the boat just as the T-Rex leaps out, engaging the Indominus in a fight. The boat leaves the chain and plummets down the legendary 84-foot drop at 50 miles per hour before hitting magnetic brakes and splashing down into the lagoon below. The water level is important for slowing the boat down in the drop, but these brakes ensure it doesn't overshoot the splashdown and it also doesn't slow down too much. After the block system clears the boat into the next section, the next boat can go down the drop. The boat is pulled by drive tires back up to the dock at the right spot thanks to beam brake photo eyes and riders can, say it with me, exit through the gift shop. While there are clearly incredible benefits to crafting a state-of-the-art, seemingly out-of-control ride, the challenges the ride faced are just the price of truly being on the cutting edge of innovation. And while most people won't ever really know the technology behind a ride like this, it shows Universal's commitment to unparalleled immersion by pushing engineering and technology to help life find a way. And that's how it works. If you liked this video, please consider supporting us on Patreon, getting a light rights board through Etsy, or just hitting subscribe. Thank you so much for joining us here on location at Universal Studios Hollywood, and I'll see you in the parks. This is not a ride, this is not a game. The dinosaurs are real.